Hey everyone, thank you for joining us. Today we're going to be interviewing Christopher Chin. He has brought his specialty of social media and networking into the real estate space and made it his own. Let's go ahead and see what we can learn from Christopher. Welcome everyone to Industry Icons. Today I'm joined with someone who's probably your friend on social media. He probably looks very familiar. His name is Christopher Chin. He's been in this industry now for four years and he's dominating using the leverage and the power of social media marketing. So today, welcome Christopher Chin. Thank you for being on the show, brother. How's it going, Lewis? Good, good. So how did you make it into this crazy industry? Tell us how that happened. Um, honestly, I was sitting home one day watching TV and I watched a couple of episodes of Million Dollar Listing, then I switched over to HGTV and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should try this out. <laughs> this is for me, right? That's what you said? Yeah. So Chris, what did you do before getting into this crazy industry? Well, I was actually working in a combination of graphic design and I was working in advertising and also working in retail as well, which helped me prepare myself in this business, in this industry as well, because, you know, example, when I was working at T-Mobile in the city, um, I was working near the Diamond District and a big part of my business was building relationships with the local businesses nice. and selling um, business lines over to those companies as well. Okay. So. Obviously, the more lines, the more companies, the more businesses that we connected with, the better we did. And so, it was also commission-based as well. Oh, sales training, right? Exactly, exactly. That's good. Well, yeah, if you could sell one thing, it's really the same thing. You just got to know your product. It's not, I mean, it's a combination of knowing your product um, and also being able to build a strong relationship with people and be able to connect with people as well. And, you know, you can't have one side without the other, unfortunately. Got it. So what did your first 30, 60, 90 days look like in the business when you got into real estate? Um... A lot of my hands touching on every side of the wall itself, trying to figure out which direction I wanted to head into. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was I'm extremely new. I was extremely new in this business. Um, I didn't know anybody, so you know, like every other new realtor who wants to explore this business, um, the first question they ask themselves is like, where do I start? Okay. Um, so I picked up a couple of books. Um, I read The Million Dollar Real Estate Agent, nice. obviously by Gary Keller. Mm -hmm. um, I read a couple of investor books as well, and. I read the 48 Laws of Power, yes. 48 Incredible. Laws of Seduction, and you know I continued reading to increase my knowledge itself mm -hmm. and just did whatever I could you know, just to try to figure out which way I wanted to navigate myself into this business. Yeah. Um, then one day, I, ironically, um, I was sitting in an office one day and I met a gentleman who added me on Facebook um, a little bit after, and I saw he was connected with some major players in this business. And, you know, example, Kathy Adad, Michalina, Ashley Gravano. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to add a whole bunch of these people on social media and Facebook. And I'm just going to introduce myself. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have nothing to lose. You know, and next thing you know, I was building incredible relationships with each one of them. And, um, example, with Michalina, I was sitting, when I was working in the city at some point, she told me that she was looking for an assistant. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> that gave me the key to leave the city officially and put all of my energy into real estate because I had some kind of backing at that point. And at the same time, by working with Michalina, I got to connect with more investors, more realtors, and Very just smart. I learned a lot in this business and learned a lot about staging on top of that. Wow, yeah, I didn't know that about you, that's incredible. So you were completely cold to this market. Even though you lived in Jersey, you were working and spending all your time in New York. So transitioning into real estate in New Jersey, you kind of had to start with a fresh slate. Now that's really encouraging for a lot of new agents because they think, well, I don't know many people. And you didn't know many people either, but you just made it your business. You made it your priority to actually go out there and start networking with social media. And that wasn't available to us 10, 20 years ago. But now you use that and you became almost like a staple in this community, couldn't you say? Oh yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting journey to say the least. Um, um, the first couple of years, a little bit of a struggle, you know, as you know, in this business itself, it's all about planting seeds and yeah. just being patient and watching it grow. And, you know, and I was able to connect, you know, by connecting with Michalina, it opened up a lot of doors for me. And That's a fast forward. Example, um, fast forward, I was sitting in, you know, one day I was sitting in a coffee shop. I mean, well, I was sitting in a coffee shop and decided to go pick up lunch, from, you know, pick up dinner for my family. Um, so I walked over to this, this Italian restaurant that's no longer there anymore in, mm -hmm. in Union. And I met, I, I was list, I, was, uh, I overheard somebody talking about they're looking for a stager, that they were looking for a stager. Oh, wow. And actually happened to be one of my investors I'm working with right now. Mm -hmm. And 
just by overhearing it, I was like, you know what, I got Michelina for you. Yeah. They didn't work a deal with each other at that particular point, but you know, as soon as I was like, you know, I have a stager for you, the next thing I said was like, you know, I also have a realtor for you as well. <laughs> um, it's a package deal. Exactly. Um, this investor actually ended up calling me, um, I think maybe that night or the next morning, nice. looking to submit an offer on a property that was Look with that. the bank. Yeah. And you know, bank deals have a deadline. Yeah. You know, there's no, you know, nobody's gonna be you know, nobody's gonna be leaning towards what time you're gonna, you know, what time the offer comes in mm -hmm. when, you know, because the bank itself says if they require the offer to be in by seven o'clock in the morning, it needs to be in at seven o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. 701, yeah. no deal. You well, know, it doesn't matter what the offer is, unfortunately. So um, I actually ended up waking up my investor at two o'clock in the morning. I was like, you know what? I would rather wake you up at two. You know, she was, a little, she was asleep in England at that point. Wow. <laughs> and so it wasn't two here, it was two there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what time it was then. <laughs> I, it was two here, so I it called her oh, at whatever okay. time it was over there in England. Okay. And she was asleep, um, but she was pretty happy that I called her, regardless of, the, regardless of what it was, because, you know, as you know, these investors, if the money's on the table, the money's on the table. It doesn't yeah. matter what time it is, mm -hmm. they're going to wake up. It you shows know? you're a hustler. Exactly, exactly. And next thing you know, she gave me a listing back in February um, in Hillside. That was okay. 633 McCannon Street. Nice. We listed at 240. It was a two bedroom, one bath um, property, fully renovated. Um, and it was absolutely stunning. Um, but what happened was we listed it actually that Super Bowl weekend. Okay. And the Super Bowl weekends, typically open houses are dead. dead. Mm -hmm. We had probably over 20 to 30 something guests in that wow, open house. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. We sold it. We got it under contract in six days, mm -hmm. sold it for 15000 above ask. Nice. Great job. Yeah. Now, was there a level of fear that you had to get over to introduce yourself to perfect strangers? Um, not necessarily for me. Um, I guess being in the retail business has helped us substantially. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, before I went to the city, I was working in the <coughs> Livingston Mall okay. many years ago. And that was when, you know, we had T-Mobile stores in the middle of, you know, yeah, kiosk kiosk. In the middle of the mall. Mm -hmm. And I was actually one of those guys, like, actually shout out to Antonio Fratellone. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> He was actually one of my competitors in Bridgewater Mall. Okay. But when I was working in Livingston, you know, it was just natural for us to just say, hey, excuse me, what kind of phone service you have? And just greeting random guests that was walking by, you know, walking through the mall. So mm -hmm. I guess that alone has helped me substantially in regards to that fear when it comes to talking to random strangers. That's good. Did you ever ask him how much does a polar bear weigh? <laughs> <laughs> I have not. You probably used every line in the book to get people's attention in the mall. <laughs> That's good. That prepared you for being able to strike up a conversation with someone that you don't know. And now at least there's a common ground in which, you know, you know, they're looking for something, you're offering something, uh, you, you know what kind of service you bring to the table. So it's kind of like, well, I'd be scared if I didn't believe in what I had. But since you believe so strongly in your product and what your service is, I'm sure you're not, you, there's no fear at all anymore. But that's what some new agents and people in general, because there's some agents that have been in business for a while who still can't get over that fear of picking up the phone, going to a networking event, and being the first one to start a conversation. What would you say about that? Um... I mean, you got to get out of your comfort zone in this business. That's that's for sure. Um, you know, there were certain things I was pretty uncomfortable with. Um, I definitely was pretty uncomfortable with speaking the first couple of times I had to speak. Mm -hmm. um, when I had to speak in front of the Matt Marinos event, um, the short sale. In a public setting. Yep, yeah. that public setting. We had, I had to also had to speak for him in a different event as well. And as you saw recently, we just spoke, re you know, I just spoke recently at Nick Tang's event yep. as well. So mm -hmm. it was just... Having to break that itself was was a little nerve wracking at first, yeah. but I've you know this business itself is like, you know, it's not like you know it's just like basketball. You mm -hmm. know, someone might not like shooting free throws, but they're yeah. gonna have to learn at some point. You know. Sure. Are you working on that now? Currently? Oh, constantly. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You, you're what you work on your weaknesses for sure. Always. Yeah. You Always. Do. Uh, I joined um, speaking clubs. I did everything I had to do because I used to also be scared of not so much scared, but very uncomfortable to speak in front of even like a circle of people. I used to feel like, you know, someone turned up the temperature by like 30 degrees as soon as I started talking. <laughs> but I did, I, I mean, I faced my biggest fears and to be able to be in front of a camera and be in front of people, it takes practice. It's not gonna happen overnight. All of a sudden it's getting all hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's the way it goes. But well, so now you, you got into real estate, you're working with uh, Michelina and now uh, she's getting you obviously in front of a lot of good potential clients. Uh, when did you hit your breakout moment? Was there a time when you're like, wow, I'm, I'm going to do this full time now? I would say, I would say it's probably when in my third year, I would say when I, when I officially, or my second year, when I first closed my first two listings. Okay. 
Um, I knew it was just the beginning phases and I had a lot more work to do at that particular point. Yeah. But I just knew by how hard I was working for my clients at that particular point mm -hmm. and just understanding my marketing um, tactics itself. And I knew that would be the driving point for my business itself. Mm -hmm. And that changed me substantially. And once I realized, yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, a lot of realtors in the beginning, you know, as a new realtor, I asked a lot of questions, like yeah. most realtors should. Yeah. And with my background in graphic design, a lot of a lot of realtors actually in the beginning told me to kind of disregard that and just kind of just go with the flow, just let everything go the way it's supposed to go, essentially. And mm -hmm. as soon as I turned that ideology off and started really implementing my background in graphic design, I was able to start creating more flyers and creating things where I could just really, you, you know, really just hit the social media market yeah. aggressively. Um, example where a lot of people will typically have to either have the same template as every other agent on the market through mm -hmm. one of these portals, yeah. or they would have to pay a graphic designer wait whatever time frame that you sure. know whatever turnaround time it would be for that project mm -hmm. to come in. I never had to wait for that. Yeah. You know, I had a new listing and I was able to cre you know I got my listing into Providence on Dirty Porter Street and thirteen eleven Crescent Avenue mm -hmm. at that point, and I was able to just create high end mar marketing materials, the typical marketing materials that you would see on you know, luxury listings, yeah, 500, 600, 700,000 to multi-million dollar listings itself. And mm -hmm. I was able to do that for a property that was under 200,000. I mm -hmm. was able to do that for a property under 600,000. Yeah. And, you know, we had a Matterport, you know, on my one of my first listings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just really just be able to do all these little things and Go just the having that mile. vision and just take that extra mile itself. Mm -hmm. And I was able to blast that all over social media. Um, and ever since then, it's just been, yeah incredible journey good that's amazing so that initial leap of faith that you took you didn't have a couple hundred grand sitting in a bank as a cushion you went out there and said look i know i've had some success but i know if i do this full time i'm going to have multiplied success is that the uh, frame of thought that you had at that moment oh 100 mm percent -hmm. and you know for me <coughs> i had a lot of doubters at that time that told me other you know, people you know, I've lost a lot of relationships over in, you know, over time itself mm -hmm. because people just honestly just told me I couldn't do what I wanted to do or I was too immature to believe what I want, you know, to believe I could accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. Okay. But, you know, in reality of it, I actually take a, I took a step back recently and realized that, you know what, they might have been right at that particular point. But because they put that doubt in me, it set a fire in oh me. Oh, my God. I love that when you do that. Oh man, it's been it's been so much fun, and you mm -hmm. know, just recently I closed the uh, the record house on the MLS in Springfield oh, uh, nice. for the most expensive house ever sold on the Springfield MLS. Wow, at congratulations! Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. And you know, what a lot of people don't realize it's it's actually right in my neighborhood in a mm -hmm. town where I grew up as maybe I definitely grew up under as a one percent of the entire town itself. Mm -hmm. You know, I was one of the only Asian Americans in the town. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't the most popular kid. Mm -hmm. I didn't. You know, as a matter of fact, I didn't go to prom. <laughs> you didn't fit the mold. I didn't. You know, so for me was, you know, what I did was instead, you know, when I was 16, I just, or 17, I worked at GameStop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if I didn't have, you know, if I wasn't going to the party, I was like, you know what, the party's lame anyways. I'd rather yeah. make money. Of course. Regardless, you know, so yeah, the, money was, the money was more fun to me. Be able to go out every single week to New York City, mm -hmm. which was something I actually really enjoyed doing back then. Just be able to go out, eat whatever I wanted to eat, mm -hmm. which is why you guys see on my Instagram page all the all these incredible food. Yeah, you're foodie. Um, coffee and everything, because I, I generally enjoy having that little bit, you know, mm -hmm. that little moment of indulgence. <laughs> yeah. So talk to us about the power of social media and how you've leveraged it to create relationships, not just to be a stalker or to compare yourself, <laughs> but how you've actually leveraged relationships on there. Um, well, social media has is funny in a way. It's you know, <coughs> it's not about building relationships on one side of the business itself, uh, on one side of the spectrum. You know, for me, it was it wasn't about just connecting with just realtors. It was all about connecting with local businesses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Matt Victoria actually gave me an idea a long time ago. So definitely a huge shout out to Matt Victoria for this to try to get really more um, really connected with local businesses as well. So I started doing the local business spotlight, and I started going to local businesses, taking photos, doing Instagram feeds, and everything. And it really connected me to more of the, you know, the town Their itself. Clients, yeah. And, you know, after a while, before I had my face on my signs, I was going to local businesses and people were like, oh, oh my God, I just saw you on Facebook. I just saw you on Instagram. Yeah. I recognize you from this. I recognize you from this. And, you know, it just made it easier for me to create my own sign and throw my mm -hmm. face on there at some point and have people, you know, have a face that people already recognize. Sure. Um, social media gave me that leverage. Um, mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for social media, for you know, I definitely wouldn't be in a position I'm in today. Yeah. Did you have to spend money on social media or was it all organic? 
Um, you know, I, I spent a little bit of money on, pro I didn't spend a lot of money on social media, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I did most of it to organic, um, organic reaches. Um, yeah. I connected to a lot of local groups, um, any group I really wanted to be attached to, um, not just to sell, but also to just, Add you know, value. to constantly yeah. learn. Oh, yeah. You know, um, being a part of all the local town forums itself, you always know what's going on within towns. You know the gossip that's happening in town. Mm -hmm. You know what people are upset about, you kind of understand you know, what's going on within the town itself constantly, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, what's our job itself being yeah. local business, um, you know, local experts. Of course. Um, so with that being said, you know, be able to be able to be connected, you know, be able to, to connect with these groups specifically, I was mm -hmm. able to learn substantially, you know, learn a lot about towns mm -hmm. that wasn't even a part of that particular point. Yeah. Um, I didn't know a lot about New Providence until I really started marketing, <coughs> started really working in New Providence itself. Yes. And now New Providence is honestly one of my favorite towns on the market. Oh yeah, it's one of the best towns in yeah. Union County as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And closing 30 Porter Street led me directly to Chatham mm -hmm. at that point. And I'm still sitting as one of the most expensive Condos sold in that unit in Heritage Green right now, and it's been over two years at this particular at this particular point. Nice, you see, but you know this information, right? But no one else does. So by you taking that information, and putting it on social media, now you've kind of created like this virtual billboard that most people wouldn't be able to afford anyway. But since you're using the power of social media and you're putting these facts out there, it's creating perception. And perception is reality in anyone's mind because our worlds are only this big. And if that's what they're seeing, that's what they're believing. So have you used um, the value of perception on, on social media to kind of create a larger than life persona that you didn't have initially that you're creating towards now? I mean, not necessarily. I try to, you know, I am very authentic in the sense that you know, I do try to, you know, I, I try to keep everything pretty personal for the most part uh -huh. on social media. You know, that's that's also why I don't have, a, you know, a separate personal page in comparison to what, ha you know, to what I have right now. I have a yeah. business page and a, and a personal page, but everything kind of meshes in one. This yeah. business is, it's it, funny in a sense. It's your life. <laughs> it is, it is, because like, you know, what do we do for the most part? You know, who do we hang out with for the most part? We hang out with our circles for the most part. And most of our circles in this business itself are also realtors or within yeah. the circle, mortgage lenders, or someone within our network itself these yeah, yeah. days. And when it comes to your typical, you know, what a normal nine to five person would do on a Saturday, Friday and Saturday, go out with their friends, mm -hmm. you know, we spent that entire week doing what they've done already. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, I'm tired at that uh -huh. point. So for me, it's like, I don't, you know, for me, it's like everything's pretty authentic. You know, I like going to get out, you know, I like going to get good food. Like mm -hmm. example, I've sat down in a coffee shop one time and I just posted here, I'm sitting down in this coffee shop for wherever long it is. Yeah. And if anybody wants to just sit, come, come, any come one of my friends, out. realtors, mm -hmm. whoever it is, I don't care. Just come and grab a cup of coffee with me. Let's do it. And mm -hmm. let's, let's, if you're a realtor, let's sit down, work, have a cup of coffee. Sure. If you're an investor, let's try to make some deals happen. If you're a regular, per if you're a regular friend, let's have a cup of coffee and have a good time. It's awesome. You know, regardless of the fact, we can make the most of every moment that we can take. And with social media, I can really just capture everything. I love that. So why, why mix it for me? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, some people b believe that um, going on social media might be an opportunity to. Uh, make a deal or, or have a sale made. Now, how do you? How should someone approach someone on on uh, social media that they're interested in doing business with? Like, would you go right up to them and say, "Hi, I'm a real estate agent. If there's ever, ever any need for uh, you to, you know, use someone like myself for buying or selling, or would you kind of like start an organic relationship with them first? How would you approach something like that? I like starting an organic relationship with someone first. I mean, if I add someone on Facebook, the first thing I would do is, "Hi, my name is Christopher Chen. Mm -hmm. um, I am with Keller Williams." Mm -hmm. Um, a Lock and J Homes team, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I will tell them here, if you want to connect at some point, we can connect. But at mm -hmm. the same time, I do like to connect with people for the most part and just build relationships because like, yeah. you know, you can never have too many friends. No, of course not. And you know what, if it, when, when you keep seeing the same person over and over again on your feed and they don't comment anything on your uh, pictures or they never even, you know, say thank you for liking my post or anything like that, it starts to become very kind of awkward. But if the person once in a while likes your picture or says a nice comment, it starts feeling like almost very personal with that person. It changes the whole dynamic of the relationship. So going that little extra mile and just congratulating someone on their birthday or telling them, hey, uh, your landscaping looks beautiful, who's your landscaper, things like that go a long way because we are social creatures. By nature, we like to be communicated with and acknowledged. And when we go to a little extra mile and use social media to acknowledge people, it means so much to the other individual that it just sticks in their head. It plants a seed that you don't really need to, you know, water from uh, all the time, but just once in a while, just a little hello, hello. 
I mean, here's the thing, like back in the day, our parents, you know, what was it all about? You know, whenever we wanted to learn something new, it was all about he said, she said. I yeah. heard it from this person, I heard it from that person. Mm -hmm. Social media is not much different, it just magnified that. Yeah. So now it's like, all right, I heard it from this person, but I really didn't hear it from them, I just saw it on feeds. Yeah. Or, you know, and that's how we connected essentially. So right. it's just more of a magnified version of what we were doing before, and that's mm -hmm. how business was structured back then. Oh, I heard this, I heard this person has this great thing, that yeah. has this great product, why don't you guys connect? Sure. I had this, I heard this guy has this or her, this lady has this why don't you guys connect and that's how we built you know that's how business was built in the 80s and the 90s mm -hmm. essentially you know yeah. it's just word of mouth and yeah. connecting things you know mm -hmm. this is what it was all about and now social media is that platform that allows us to connect with people absolutely in a much magnified in a much magnified fashion mm -hmm. all right so you've managed to create a successful real estate profession for yourself uh, and now you've actually become a team leader can you uh, explain to us how you made that progression um ironically I was working with Albert a long time ago um, in uh, the Livingston uh, Mall. Explain who Albert is to the audience. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Albert Torres is one of my newest team members and we started working together towards the end of September. Um, I started working with him, Brittany, um, Brittany Abreu, and I also hired Melanie Jimenez as well okay, on nice. my team as well. So we have we had a team of four. I'm okay. working on a fifth member actually right now to help me cover the Somerset County market. Congratulations. So. Constantly expanding, uh -huh. um, a lot, a lot happening. It's been, it's been pretty fun. No. Um, ironically, I was working with um, Albert many, many years ago, back in the Livingston Mall days when I was working in T-Mobile, and he yeah. was working at the AT and T, and we were always competing against each other. And I just so happy, you know, I was in this business for a long time, and yeah. he was actually working in the city for a little bit as at the Keller Williams in New York. Um, he stopped doing real estate for a while, and you know, eventually decided to join my team. And, you know, he knew Brittany and Melanie for a while as well. And, you know, we were just walking through, you know, one day I was walking through Barnes and Nobles, I connected with Melanie and Brittany was in the office already. And, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, we just combined forces at some point and just That's made amazing, incredible brother. things happen. Yeah, so you, in this business, you gotta be able to recognize talent. And there's some talented people who are in the wrong profession, but they have that drive and they have that passion for sales, but they're just not, they're not selling something that's profitable, right? It's a combination you, of fighting talent and also be able to let go. Mm -hmm. For me, the biggest struggle struggle in the beginning is like, I'm, I've been so used to doing everything by myself for so long. I was there too. Yeah, yeah. and then now it's like, all right, you mm -hmm. handle this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit back and just manage you and make sure you do this properly. Yeah. So like, actually, as a matter of fact, the first couple of months, well, the first two months for me, I knew I had to take a major step back in my business itself, but yeah. like at the same time, I knew if I could push people forward and I move I'd quicker take leaps. You're scaling yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but then you worry sometimes, like, oh, they're not doing it as good as I. Maybe they didn't say the right words. Maybe this, maybe that. But it drives you crazy. But then when you start to see the fruits of the labor starting to come out of it, you're like, all right, this could work. Well, if you take a proper, if you if you take each, each step properly, and if you have the right people in play, even if they're new agents or not, mm -hmm. you know, whether you know, no matter how long they've been in this business. Um, if you have strong enough confidence in those people, you're gonna get there with them. Yeah. And like, I feel comfortable with them because like, you know what is for me right now, it's a lot of it, a lot of what's you know, happened in the very beginning phases was like, all right, just get the deal on the table and I'll walk you through the negotiations as we're doing it. Yeah. And you know, because that's the one thing that because you know that a lot of agents shy away from in the beginning. It's like, all right, now we're on the contract. Now I got to deal with this person. How do I de work with this agent? This mm -hmm. agent's such an established agent. What do we do from here? Yep. You know, um, and now following each step and making sure that everything's done properly. Mm -hmm. That's the part. That's the that's the part that we got to make sure everything's executed properly because the client matters substantially. Sure. You know, I, I say it all the time that we're working with someone's most important asset, and you know, we what are the what's the most, you know the three most important things in life it's mm -hmm. housing money family mm -hmm. and without housing the other two doesn't exist yeah of course <laughs> mm -hmm. so you know i truly believe that because we're working with someone's most important asset that we got to give that full attention mm -hmm. to every client no matter what the price bracket is um because we're working Make with the most special. important gem yeah <laughs> that's the biggest thing in our life Exactly. Yeah, for us, it, we become almost desensitized to it because we do it every day. But for them, it's the biggest thing in the world, like you said. So is that what you've instilled in your agents to kind of make them extraordinary? I, I believe so. Um, I, I be in, in all honesty, too, I do believe that we all follow the same philosophy. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty blessed to know that these guys have walked into the industry feeling exactly the same way I do. Good. 
um, we all have that same humble passion itself in regards to the fact that we want to make sure that all our clients are happy in the long run. Yeah. You know, obviously when it comes to bumping, you know, doing deals together itself, like example, Albert and I just had a dual agent closing. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And where he brought in the buyer and, you know, obviously you're going to bump heads in deals. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to happen itself. But as long as, as, you know, the client's best interest is in mind, you know, in the long run, you're going to find middle ground and you're going to make it. <laughs> sure. Now, what does the future hold for you and your team? I mean, I'm always looking on expanding mm -hmm. and increasing our knowledge and, you know, growing. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to this incredible year. I have a lot, wow. a lot planned. Um, I have a couple of listings already lined up for the year itself. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm already looking into the biggest year I've ever had. Sure. So it's course. an incredible way to start off the new decade. <laughs> yeah, you can never go backwards, only forwards. Of course, of course. That's <laughs> awesome. Are you prepared for an industry correction or a crash? And how would you navigate that? I mean, I am pretty prepared because, you know, I always do believe, you know, regardless of the fact, even if the, you know, if the market starts going down, um, people will still need to buy homes. Still, yeah. They still need to live somewhere. Yeah, it's um, not a fad, right? It's a necessity. Hey, someone's still going to get married tomorrow, right? <laughs> yeah, they're going to have kids and all oh, that's going to Exactly. Happen. And yeah. even if they're not buying or renting, so regardless of the fact, there's going to be clients on the table. We just got to figure out how we can navigate them and, you know, best serve, you know, best serve their best interest itself. Sure. And if we're <coughs> able to take care of their best, their, their needs, then it shouldn't be much of a major issue. No. Um, that just means, I honestly believe that this just means that people that are working harder for the clients yeah. will last a lot longer in this business. Yeah. Whereas someone that's just going to be, you know, lazy in the business itself, yeah. they're just going to fall off the cliff. I believe that. During that time, I believe the cream will rise to the top and the people who are not made for this business or just doing it as a hobby will see their way out. That oh, way 100%. More, more business will fall in, in your lap. I well, heard that. Thank you, Chris. Well, how can someone find out more about you and your team? How can they find you? Um, you can either check me out at our website or check us out on our website at www.unlockingjhomes.com. Um, mm -hmm. Also on Instagram at unlockingjhomes and the Unlock NJ Homes team. Nice. Thank you for being on the show thank today, you, brother. And thank Have you. And thank you guys for watching. I appreciate everyone. Please leave us a comment, share it, like it. Thank you guys. See you next time. Have a good one, guys.